particular stage play? What really struck you? To... Um, I mean, this is a play that is one of my favorite plays. Um, I first came across this play after Professor Yerima wrote it, and that will probably be what now, 2007 ish, 2007, 2008, I came across the play for the first time and I acted in it and I fell in love with it. And then fast forward 2014, after establishing my company, I produced it in 2014 and it was a real, it was a huge success. The, uh, make, the make It Happen yeah. Productions, exactly. And in 2014, um, I produced it and it was really successful. Everybody really liked it because the play is very hilarious. It's a hilarious play, it's entertaining and you know then I was just starting off as a producer and it was very it was very well received so you know you do one production and people say you know you have to do it again it has to come back and I've just been waiting for the right time to do it again or the right funding or the right process and here we are five years after. Well let's talk about the play and um, it tackles polygamy yeah. and you know how somehow People tend to believe polygamous homes are rife with chaos and co-wives mm -hmm. fighting. And so, what are you guys doing differently in this place? I mean, I don't, I don't know that we're doing something differently, and I, I, I think I should put it out there: like the play is not trying to be deep. It's not trying to teach a lesson. It's not a moral play or anything. It's just a story. It's a simple, funny story about a man who died. Um, and then there's a conversation around how he died, why he died, when he died, and we're introduced to his entire family as the story unfolds. His burial is about to take place, but before he's buried, some things must happen. And yes, polygamous homes are filled with chaos, polygamous homes are filled with arguments. I mean, a room full of people, of 10 people, will be full with arguments. How much more a man who has three wives, you know, so... Um, we get to find all of this out. So I don't know that we're doing something differently. The story is there and it's what is written that we're performing. Um, and I, I think Professor Yerima really just wanted to capture that side because we find a lot of our, well, for some people like us in this generation, it would be our grandfather's married mother and one wife. And there's always a lot of drama around the burial of a chief or an elder person. I'm thinking if you're going to use that source material mm -hmm. and superimpose it on our current cultural conversation mm -hmm. on Twitter, there's mm -hmm. feminism, there's patriarchy mm -hmm. and tweaking it to sort of make it more make it more resonant mm -hmm. in terms of how women can actually, you know, um, rise above or make choices. For example, I don't see I don't think our society would evolve to a point where women would find polygamy more fashionable for them because even in the monogamous setting mm -hmm. there is that dynamic or mm -hmm. that pre-existing mm -hmm. dynamic where you know the woman's choices are desires revolves around the man even if mm -hmm. she's a career making lady mm -hmm. she, she brings in the bread so I was hoping or thinking perhaps this you know, stage play would be fashionable to be to I mean which is which is still why um, I, I, I still go back to the material because there are three wives, and the three wives are different women. I'm sorry to cut you short, but mm -hmm. you say you have that um, freedom to, to, to um, tweak. Or are you meant to really stick to what I mean, it, 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 all these things are, it, there's intellectual property, yeah. there are legal conversations. If you're picking a play that was already written, and you want to tweak it, you need to get permission from the writer, and the writer needs to approve that you want to make X, Y, and Z changes to the script. But in the script that we have, which I, I keep on emphasizing that we're doing exactly what Professor Yerima wrote, there are three different women. One is a housewife, one is a career woman, one is a dumb blonde, just a dumb girl, you know? And it is when, and I'm trying not to give too much away, but it's when you see the play, you'll find that one of them wasn't ready to be this woman who was going to be oppressed or to be put under and all of that. So she sort of represents the modern day woman. But you have to see the play to know her. Do you think, because most times I feel like stage plays are becoming more, more, I mean you can, they're quite tantamount to your regular concerts mm -hmm. as at now. 
And if you look at your typical stage play, you see more women in the forefront. Women championing or women telling stories. Why is that like, why are, why, for example, your, this stage play has women in predominant, predominantly in the cast. Why do you think stage plays or women are, you know, moving towards this medium? Um, I don't know that there is an intentional move like women are going. I just think it's the time that we are in. You know, in, in Hollywood, for example, women are at the forefront. There are more female actors. There are more female producers. The people that actually, yeah, there are more female actors. Before you, before, if you want to cast 10 women and 10 men, you'll find it easier to cast 10 women. Before you cast 10 men, you within a certain age. There are more, um, female executive producers who are making the films that are doing very well at the box office. Female directors are also rising. So I think generally in society, I think in Nigeria there are more women than men, first of all. Then I find that women, it's just time for women. Women are just going ahead, are taking the bull by the horn, are deciding, you know what, this is what I want to do. I'm going to go for it and I'm going to do it. And so it's not so, I didn't, uh, picking this play wasn't because I was looking for women. It just happened to be, and Yeri, Professor Yerima wrote this play years ago. So he didn't even write it now. But he wrote a play with more women than men in the cast, which is, which is actually not the norm. Because many plays actually, to correct that, many plays, except when intentionally written, many plays have more men in them. Many plays have more men in the leading role. Many of the traditional plays, the classic plays, are not really about women, except for the ones about the female legends, maybe like a Morimi. But beyond that, beyond that, maybe Wedlock of the Gods is centered around a woman, you know, but beyond that, the classic plays, they're men. Even, even, and you find that even in the stories that have the women as the lead, after that woman who is the lead, 90% of the cast is a man. So I think I think women are just going going for it. Um, so where do you think people can actually purchase a ticket? Before we just talk about that, mm -hmm. let's also talk about the casts. Mm -hmm. And then we've got Shafi Bello, mm -hmm. Dr. Jude Kosako, who's like a veteran in the industry. Mm -hmm. And was it a deliberate uh, way chose was it something you saw in individual mm. actors or you were recommended? Um, so, I mean, I did the play before in 2014. And for me as a producer, when I do a play for the first time, if I'm going to rerun it, the actors who did it the first time have the right to a first refusal, except they are not available or they're not in the country or whatever. So we did the play in 2014. We had Jacques Silva, Kate Henshaw, Rachel Ladoyle, Jide Bello, um, Tonya Shinaike, Deborah Williams and I in the play and at the time I, I just you know when you're casting you have the material you look around you see what actors work um, for me the actors that work for the role the actors I, I love I would love to work with or I love working with actors who I also know the audience wants to see because I'm a producer so I need to put actors in a play that I know are bankable to a certain degree and that people would pay money to come and watch and people who I also felt were committed to working on stage because working on stage is, it requires a lot of commitment. So we did that in 2014. For the second run, we have Binta Ayomogaji, we have Kate Henshaw, we have Shafi Bello, we have Jide Kosoko, Tonyo Shinaike, Tokwe Tedela, and myself this time around. Only because the people in the previous run are not available. Some of them are not in the country, some of them are otherwise occupied, but hey, the show must go on. And these are also some of my favorite people in the industry. I like to work with people. I like being around, especially on stage. In film, you know, you go and you shoot your bit and you get out. But in theater, you become a family with your cast. You're seeing each other every day for four weeks. You're doing this thing because you're repeating the same thing every time, every time. You do at least three to four to five to six performances of the same play. You become a family. So for me, I have a personal preference for people I like being around. So if my first choice would always be somebody who works for the role, who can deliver the role, but someone who I also like being around, someone who I love their work ethic, someone who I know is committed. 
those things matter to me and I, I, it's not a general rule but it just matters to me you know when casting and these these my I mean I haven't I hadn't worked with Ayo Mogaji until now I'd never met her I never even met her in person until I had to call her to be in this so this is my first time working with her it's my first time being around her it's my first time doing anything with her and you know I just looked around I needed a, a, somebody who had a mother figure who could be a matrix and she's she's a she's a veteran and one phone call where we're good to go yeah so the stakes were run for three days no it's running for four days. four days thursday friday saturday and sunday the 5th of september to the 8th of september 2019. what i find interesting is on the very first day the actors perform the next day they perform again the next day they perform it how does that how do you how do you guys maintain your mental mental energy i mean it, it's quality, maintain, <laughs> I don't know, it, it's, 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 it's interesting that stage play as an art form, mm -hmm. different from cinema, from film, mm -hmm. movies, what people can ask. I mean, it comes with the job. It's like you ask a doctor, well, how, how can he perform a surgery over and over again? It comes with the job, um, and even for the actor, the more times you do a play, the better you get. So as an actor, if you've prepared and worked on a stage play, and you've rehearsed for a long period, you don't want to do it once. You actually don't want to do it once. You want to do it once, twice, three times, four times. Because it's, it's like fine wine. It, it gets better as you continue to perform it because now you're more in sync. Now you trust your reflexes more. Now you know probably where the audience will react or where they won't react. Is so the play... I mean, no, no, I mean, it's half and half. Um, and sometimes, yeah, some people get to a point where they start playing to the gallery where they feel like, oh my god, I did that, the audience liked it, and then they're just doing stuff on their own. It takes a professional actor to, to, to stick to the rules and do what we rehearsed because it's not a one-man show. It's not about you, it's about everybody. Um, but as, like, I always recommend, you know, people come on the last, come, just keep coming. Some people see a play on the first day, and by the time they see it on the last day, they're like, there's, there's a difference. There's a huge, because the play has grown, the performance has grown, the actors have grown. So actually, we want to do it every day. It's, it's never tiring. It's never, and sometimes you, you might feel, oh, I'm so tired, I'm gonna do this play X number of times for this period. And then the moment you start, you remember where you started. Do you plan to take the play beyond today? I mean, we're ready if we find the funding, if we have the funding, we don't have the funding right now, thanks. We're so grateful to Y Niger for supporting us and co-executive producing this play because I mean, Y Niger is positioning itself as um, uh, uh, an organization, a platform that supports the creative entrepreneur. So Y Niger coming on board to co-executive produce this with us has really helped us at the Make It Happen Productions. It has eased a lot of the stress because it's still show business, but this one time we're doing it in Lagos, if we find the funding, we're ready to go everywhere. If we find the sponsors, yeah, we're ready to go. Country. Yeah. Oh, we're ready. But it's always about the money. It's always about the structure. It's always about the funding. And like I always say that arts and culture are expensive. And it must be supported. Um, people cannot pay for arts, for the arts. The arts are expensive. And for the arts to thrive, the arts need support from government, from corporate Nigeria, from, from everywhere. You know, because arts are expensive, but arts are necessary. So it has to be paid for, it has to be supported so that everybody experiences art even though they can't afford it. Okay. So what do you want people to take away from the stage? I mean, honestly, premium I'm not... Exactly, not premium, pre premium entertainment, um, something different to do on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, great time with your friends, enjoying an excellent performance from some of Nigeria's best talent. Um, and just, you know, having a good time. Premium entertainment. I'm not going to preach at people. If people go home feeling loved again, good for them. If they feel, if it reignites something in them, good for them. Because there are many themes in the play. There's a theme of love, there's marriage, there's friendship. There is, um, there's a theme of, you know, there's, there's the conflicts between tradition and modern times. So how a man is buried, what is done before he's buried, is his will ready before he's buried, is he buried according to traditional rights or according to Christian rights? You know, these conversations are in the play. And for me as an artist and as a curator of art, 
what I like my audience to take away from any form of art that I express is conversations. I want your minds pushed, I want people to have conversations, I want people to ask questions and then let them decide for themselves what they want to take away. I want everybody that comes to the play on the drive home to keep arguing, to keep saying, are you sure? That, that way I know I've done a good job. So that it's, it's now in their hands and art can take whatever form. True. But is there any, any kind of soft material you would like to do on stage? Oh, I mean, there's, I mean, of course I, I do have my one woman show Naked. Yes. Another play I really want to I produce is, thank you. Another play I want to produce is The Secret Lives of Baba Segi's Wives. Yes. Um, no, why, 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 no, why that? Why that? Because I've read the book. And for me as an artist, when I read, I read the book, and of course it's about women, again. <laughs> and the theme of polygamy. Yes, okay. you know. <laughs> and, and The Secret Lives of Baba Segi's Wives touches on society and the things we don't talk about. We act like these things don't exist, but they really do. Also, it's a brilliant story. It's brilliantly written. It's excellently entertaining. It will be amazing. From the first day I picked it up, I'm like, this thing is going to be great on stage. I want to produce this. I want to produce this. That hasn't happened, but I'm putting it out to the universe. I, that's something I would really want to produce. And, you know, there are many other things coming up. There are many other things coming up, but I think it's a great time to be a woman. I think it's a great time to be a woman in Nigeria, in Hollywood, in the artists, in the art space. I think we are at the forefront of telling our stories, we're tired of people telling our stories for us. So, and more women are collaborating. You know, they say women can work well together. I think that thing is a lie that men started. Um, women work well together. Um, yeah, so. Tickets? Um, I mean, we have a phone number where you, which you can call us on. Um, and just follow us at the Make It Happen Productions. We're already selling tickets. So when you call us, you pre-order, we deliver tickets and we have pickup locations where you can get your tickets. Yeah. Tickets will be sold on Oh yeah, tickets will be sold at the venue. Of course, tickets from, from Thursday, from the 5th, from 12 noon, from 10 a.m. on the 5th. Everybody should just come and buy their tickets at the venue if they haven't bought already. But I recommend and I'm encouraging Nigerians to pre-buy. Because Nigerians like to buy on the day. Then when it's sold out, they'll start abusing you. But it's my money I want to spend. But this, and we intend to sell out. So everybody should try and get their tickets before the show. So you know that you, know, you have your tickets in your hand. Because when we get to a certain limit, we will, we will stop selling. Except, you know, we see, okay, are there more spaces or whatever. So please follow us at the Make It Happen Productions. Follow me at Lala Kindoju and you will see all the details on how to purchase your tickets there. Right, thank you. Lala, You're welcome. For that invitation to talk about your stage Thank you for having me. September 5th to, to 8th, 2019 yes. at the Maison Centre. Thank you so much.